Well, good morning or good afternoon or good day, whatever time it is and you've actually logged in to see this this morning. Uh, I guess it's our new normal for a little while. Uh, going to get to see me on video instead of in the classroom. Uh, first of all, I hope everybody's doing fine. Uh, miss you guys terribly. It's, it's an awful lot of fun to work with such fun students as you guys are and I'm going to miss you. So, we're going to try and have as much contact as we can have uh, through the video and, and through stuff that's going on. Things are going to be a lot like they were in class. If you've noticed, if you're one of those kids who's already been on Canvas and seen, there's a lot of stuff on Canvas already. If you forgot your book and it's at school, that's okay. It's easier to do with the book, but there are links to Wikipedia on every single one of the chapters that we're going to be doing. And right now we're going to be working, of course, on the chapter on Beethoven. And this week I'm going to ask you to pick a piece of music by Beethoven and listen to it. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. There's a lot of them that are really long. So say about five minutes worth and then do the same sort of stuff that we've been doing all year long. Pitch, intensity, timbre, duration, form. Gee, what instruments are he using in the orchestra at this point in time? How are they organized? What sort of things are important? Does he use lots of contrasts? And of course, depending on the style period of Beethoven that we're talking about, he has three big style periods, uh, it'll be rather different. Okay, so a little bit about Beethoven. He's the first person you might call a real artist, as far as musicians are concerned. Lots and lots of people up to this time, the, the way you made money up to this time as a musician is you had a patron. And that rich person fed you, clothed you, put you in their livery, and you worked for them. But you really weren't much more than like a wallpaper hanger would be today. You were somebody who provided decoration for them. Now, it's a really good job, and we've talked about what a good job that was for Mozart's father, and what a good job that was for Haydn, how much money they made, how, how solid their careers were. But Beethoven wasn't buying it, partly because Beethoven grew up understanding the Enlightenment. He saw those things in philosophy that we take for granted today, that all men are created equal, that all women are created equal. Now, back in the day, that's not the way it was. Rich people were created better. Nobility was created better. Now, I doubt that anybody in my class would buy into that. But, when it's what you grew up with, it's what you believed. And Beethoven really didn't believe it. He had such a great sense of self, of who he was, that he thought, listen to my music, and if you like it, love it. If you're happy with it, wonderful. You can pay me money for it and all those kinds of things. You can be my friend. And if you don't like it, go away. He just really couldn't care less about the people who didn't like what he did. It made him a very, very strong person. And he changed history because of it. Why do we end the classical time period with Beethoven's death? Because Beethoven has pushed along what's going to become the Romantic time period. He stands in between. He's about half in the classical time period and half in what we're going to call Romantic. And he's the guy who pushes it that way. Now if you listen to some of his symphonies, you can completely see the Romanticism that's coming. If you listen to the Third Symphony or the Fifth Symphony, or the Ninth Symphony, you can absolutely see the Romanticism that's coming. If you listen to the First Symphony, it's a lot more like Haydn. If you listen to the Fourth Symphony, it's a lot more like Haydn. He, he vacillates back and forth between rather conservative things and really far out wonderful things. Now Beethoven is an incredible person as far as pushing music along, but he's not everybody's favorite composer. If he's yours, that's great. There's tons of things to listen to that Beethoven wrote. And for those of you who were here for the day when I played the, uh, the entire Fifth Symphony for you, there's stuff in the Fifth Symphony that has been stolen and used in modern music all the time. And those of you who are Star Wars fans got to hear Princess Leia being foreshadowed by what Beethoven had written back in the day. And John Williams, of course, had borrowed that. And modern composers borrow from Beethoven all the time. We even did it one year on the marching field. Yep, the Moonlight Sonata on the marching field. So there's a lot of cool stuff. The assignment for this week is to find one piece of music and really listen to it well and tell me a lot about it. Now, you're going to have to tell me more about it than you did in class because you've got the option 
of being able to look at things. You know, I can't stand over you and say, oh, look, they have not looked at things. So be really good in what you tell me about it, okay? Have an absolutely super day. I'll be in and out all the time this week. Uh, I'll be checking into Canvas. I'll be checking into my email. You can send things to my email. You can send things to Canvas. Either one is fine. Uh, that's Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, Duncan, D-U-N-C-A-N, all one word, at G-I-S-D dot O-R-G. I hope you're having a great day. I hope your parents are having a great day. Go do something fun. Listen to some music you haven't listened to before. There are tons of things available right now that are just a blast. I'm going to put a link on the Canvas page to Doc's Fun page where I'm putting all the cool stuff that I'm finding. And it's a Facebook page, and you can go there, find all those cool things, and go visit some fun stuff. Have a great one. Bye-bye.